unmute us now so now everyone can hear us hey everyone we've been on the right channel the whole time look at us professional streamers all right here's the intro that you're going to cut to this is the beginning of the podcast you, all the other audio you don't need it okay hey everyone hi hello Clap. uh are we clapping <laughs> dude i can well, do it now <laughs> oh okay all right okay three two one all right that was a good clap we are synced up welcome to bro man podcast episode 135 uh with frank and matt aka technique at nighthawk plays i am super excited to introduce them as the hosts of the new podcast that will be here on the rare drop network comics which is about comics oh no i can't hear frank you want to hear something very interesting? Yes. My GoXLR, the fabulous GoXLR, the, yes. the, the most beautiful, amazing thing ever made. Just pooped out on me. Uh, I'm so sorry. And I had to read. It's okay. Technology, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> All right, so, we're good. Should we clap again? <laughs> we should. Uh, <laughs> we. <laughs> Um, right. <laughs> yeah, no, we're good. We're good with the, I think we're good. Right. Uh, sorry about that. Yes. Hey, that's if it's nothing but professional here all the time, but that actually leads right into the, you know, first thing I like to talk about with, uh, every guest or set of guests that we have. Um, you know, we obviously were launching this new podcast and, uh, it wasn't in the wheelhouse of anyone else, uh, at rare drop. So I would like, uh, and I guess Frank, you, I would love it if you would kick this off. Like, sure. tell 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 everybody the history of this podcast. Well, um, uh, if anybody watches my or my Twitter, um, had a different name back then. It was <clears throat> DJ Tech Life. We don't talk about that. But um, that. anyway, no, I had that name back then, and uh, I was creating a comic show a long time ago, and I asked people to pique their interest. I was like, "Yo, if I did something like this, would you be interested?" And the outpour was a little demanding. Um, so. <laughs> I did try to start it. I had all the stuff ready to go for visualization, but I needed help on the back end. I needed some serious people and those people got serious jobs and you know, you can't, you can't sit there and hate them for that. So it was put on pause and I've always been a fan of rare drop. I've actually harassed both, uh, Roman and, and Kevin, uh, to let me be a part of this, but they were always kind of like, Oh, we got stuff coming up. Maybe <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's a good way to let me say no. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> you know, but we've always been friends for a long time. So and then they hit me up and, uh, they were like, Hey, we were, we can have, we have an idea. And I was like, perfect. I have this. And they were like, perfect. And they were like, we need to find a co-host for you. And, um, you know, I uh, ended up being somebody that I didn't know. And, and that's Matt and we, we vibe, dude. We vibe hardcore. We once we get once you get us talking about comics, you don't shut us up. And uh, you know, a hour and a half show might turn out being three hours. Um, so we, we we're gonna be very strict on what we do. Yeah, uh, but I, I'm in love with it. I'm a big Marvel head. He's a big DC head. But I do all of them. I want all comic stuff to be successful. And what better way to do it than with Rare Drop? Because Rare Drop is serious about everything they do. They're very professional, oh. very respected across the board. Um, everybody I talked to when I when I when I told my close, 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 close people about, uh, you know, uh, maybe a partnership that we're going to do. What did you feel about a comic show just to get their, you know, their reaction? Because you always go to people that's closest to you. They'll be the truthful ones to you. They were like, oh, my gosh, it couldn't be even better. That is a marriage that needs to happen. And I was like, OK, then it's over. And that's pretty much it. And we're here. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. So what? What brought both of you into before we get into comic books? What uh, like what 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 brought you both into making content? Um, you know, like what what got you started in making content? Like what point in your life were you like, I'm gonna try this? Well, uh, I mean, me for me specifically, I've been a fan of of watching streamers like many people watching now or, or listening for for quite a while and. Um, I was actually at a point in my old job where, funny enough, um, I worked for a company that actually created collectibles for the video game industry. So I had my tie there and I'm a geek, I'm a nerd. I've loved this stuff since I was a, a second old. And um, during my, my the latter years there and when I was kind of transitioning out, um, you know, some of my favorite streamers, Rare Droppers and, and, uh, and others, uh, um, I was watching you and I was like, you know what? I feel like this is something I want to try. I want to, I want to do this. I want to, I want to create, 
I love connecting. I love talking. I was in front of people at New York Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, PAX, talking hundreds of thousands of people. Let me transfer uh, that skill into just being on camera, specifically now, you know, Twitch every day and doing something that I love. And that's playing video games and talking coffee and, and taking copious amounts of fall damage and, and just having fun, to, including talking <laughs> everything, comic books, Marvel, DC, The Boys, Invisible, Star Wars and other things it was uh it was it was a passion project which i'm very you know knock on wood very lucky that uh i'm in the position where i am today to to be a full-time content creator and have a, a wife that supports this this vision and passion dope oh i um well I, it's a very interesting story i used to act and uh i acted my way out of high school and into college and then my mom was like great actor but there's no money in there for you because you have to spend a lot of money and i was like no you don't mom you just have to do it. and she's like have you seen what the uh guilds that you have to join mm. my mom used to do it all and uh <laughs> oh. i would look down i was like okay so about another job uh you know, yeah so <laughs> made a way through college uh you know we went to japan and studied there for a little bit and came back ended up being bilingual of course and uh i was gonna go on a jet program but i told myself is that what i really want to do do i really want to just sit there and teach all day so <clears throat> to put myself into a better mindset i started djing full time and uh, i liked it but i hate traveling and uh people just don't respect the amount of money that you put into equipment and they start dancing Ooh, yeah. next to your stuff when you tell them no they start touching your stuff start requesting songs when you say there's no request and i just got really pissed off about it so i was like you know what I'm going to play games, <laughs> you know, because yeah. I like playing games. And I was like, why not? What is this streaming stuff? And I remember seeing Soda Poppin' and, and Tally mm. because I was into WoW back then. And um, Tally was like a myth legend, you know, in the WoW community back then. And um, when I went on to Justin TV, I was like, what is this GeoCities E-Bombs World? Like, you know, virus <laughs> <up> website. <laughs> there was ads everywhere and stuff. I thought it was like a porn site at first. I was like, yeah, I ain't doing it. You know, um, they had ads for everything, bro. I think they were ran by Ad Junkie at some point. I, I was just like, yeah, I'm not doing it. It was rough. And I came back and they were switching to Twitch. And I was like, you know what? Sitting here and seeing Cole Carnage, pretty much all the big dogs at that time. Well, Cole was not a big, big dog, but he was he was struggling to make it. And I liked his struggle because they let me see the realistic side of it. <clears throat> and um, it's like, you know, I think you'd be pretty good at streaming. And I was like, what? And uh, I turned on the stream one day and we had 40 viewers that day and people were like flipping out that we had 40 viewers and i was like not a lot and they were like yeah it is so after that um people were telling me they don't want to see me be like everyone else and i didn't know what that means and uh, someone said you have something special man you're a mixed kid you know you're brown skin and you love all these nerdy stuff that people think that you're the people that look like you don't like and that pissed me off <laughs> you know i was just like hell am i an alien or something that's supposed to okay look i like this that and the other when i started drawing i started drawing on stream showing them how much of involved i was in comics i bring into my background where i used to work on comics actually uh with sanford green who's a who's a big wow. comic artist and uh we worked on a few projects together with that he taught me a lot i was 15 years old when i met lasan thomas adam hughes i was always in the game since a teenager and um i thought that was the route i was gonna go i always wanted to illustrate comics and stuff but what better way to create con content in front of people who play video games. I was like, hey, if I can play video games in front of people, I was the only child growing up. You know, I was like, this is like my brothers and sisters out here. This is pretty, pretty cool. And they're saying, no money. I got partnered within five months. Uh, and then stuff started happening. I was like, wow, you can actually make money. This is interesting. <laughs> and, and yeah, because I, I had no idea, man. And, you know, here I am today in 2021, just now figuring out stream streaming. <laughs> <Dude. laughs> like <literally> just <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel like we're all still we're always figuring it out. Like just right when you think you got it, you're like, ah, this is nice. And then somebody's yeah. like, have you seen absolutely new thing 3.0? That's right. Yeah. It changes everything about what you do. And if you don't use it, you're irrelevant. And you're like, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> every every time. OK, so but let's get let's let's get into I want to talk about like the most recent comic stuff, like Marvel DC Fine. Universe stuff, right? That people are paying attention to right now. So like, I don't know what you want to start with because we've got, you know, Captain America, the Winter Soldier just ended. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Fantastic. Uh-huh. Which is amazing. And then amazing. of course we have like, you know, for DC, it's still 
every uh, once a week the Snyder Cut trends into my timeline for some reason <laughs> uh, for like whether people are happy or mad, happy, mad, sad, whatever. So like I don't, I don't know where we want to start the discussion, but um, uh, but I would love to know. I love yeah, to know. I'll just say that so much to talk about. So yeah, go ahead, Frank. <laughs> oh, oh, my bad. No, you can. You want to start? You can start. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, we're at an interesting point right now, right? I mean, you're talking about a big budget, as I air quote, blockbuster in the Snyderverse. Almost one of the. Uh, I, don't, I There was another movie before I came for but as far as like superheroes, one of the first in history to get that massive of a change and it's almost like opening up pandora's box a lot of people are memeing it you know do this cut do that cut do the you know do the uh do the air cut now do do this cut do that cut we want to see all these different cuts and i <laughs> uh, it's it's very polarizing frank and i were talking the other day about this you know it, there's such a divide i feel it's either you like what they did with the snyder cut or you're not a fan to put it uh to put it mildly of the snyder cut and uh for me i fall on the just because of i mean it was I'm a huge Superman fan. I'm a huge DC fanboy. It was so bad, Justice League, that the Snyder Cut, I went through it with, like, zero expectation, and I did enjoy it. Yes, there was corniness. Yes, there was plot holes. Yes, there was this, that, and the other, but I enjoyed it, and I liked how they took the... One thing that it came out of it that I love and I want to see DC do more of is the 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 darker tone of it. Like where they ended Man of Steel with, spoiler alert, uh, uh, Henry Cavill's Superman snapping Zod's neck, like going dark with it, seeing blood coming out of these parademons and all the craziness. I want them to take it because the, the DCEU is effed up. It's not Marvel. Marvel can go crazy, but the DCU is definitely dark. And I, for all the corniness and craziness, long spiel over, I enjoyed it. Frank. Uh, well, okay. Um, uh, so X Men, when X Men came out a long time ago, um, I think X Men was the first introduction, right? Yeah, it was like X Men and Fantastic Four was a really big, a really big introduction to Marvel. I mean, Spider Man was there, and everyone yeah. liked Spider Man because it was all we had, right? It's like, yeah, Tom McGuire. Eh, oh, it actually is pretty good, you know. And, and it kind of lined up with it because we were just desperate back then for for something the comic book because star wars was there and we were like okay if star wars can do it why can't comics do it x-men came and ruined it um you know and and then granted that was fox and all that stuff but still i think the mcu definitely put more people on about comics in general um you know thank goodness for that uh if you want to talk about some big monumental titles uh, iron man was huge for mcu robert downey jr is was huge 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 for mcu um and then kudos to him because he was coming off of like a really 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 bad sink point in his life with drugs and oh, stuff yeah. um you know and they gave him they gave he started taking martial arts and and then started being disciplined and they gave him like a chance like the the biggest company in the world gave him a chance and 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 there and here he is today and like uh black panther was monumental monumental for for comic books in general um especially uh with with a with a fully on you know african american cast and, and protagonist and director and you know and and so on and so forth i i think this brings the attention is very positive for mcu and comic book fans around the world but it's very negative for dceu because now you can't help but compare marvel to dc when there was already a divide there in the beginning it was a playful thing now people are just like you know budget wise production wise casting all that stuff marvel uh what dc does have is an animated world yeah. the animated world for dc was just fan freaking tastic oh but my they god push it another level yeah. you know young justice needed to be invincible in my opinion um you know uh the snyder cut needed to go dark like it, you know it, it would have impressed me because dc is not about superheroes i feel I feel like DC is about vigilantes and taking justice in your own hands. Like everybody you could say took justice in their own hands in some part in, in DC. And they really, really, I want to see the mental struggle of Batman. Okay. Mm. Deal with real life events, mental struggle, lost his family at early age. It's going through stuff. He has to decide whether to, somebody pissed him off, say the wrong thing. He could probably snap on somebody. Why don't well, let him snap? You know, um, uh, same thing with Superman. He's being held at the highest standpoint. You know, he's Superman. Let him snap. You know, I think that we were talking about it, Roman, um, the other day, that that side job movie uh, wasn't Smallville or nothing, but it was like that little kid. It was like an alternate universe. What if, what if Superman was a little kid and 
and and people were bullying him and stuff he yeah, snapped right and killed right. everybody oh yeah i never got to watch that yeah. that, right that burn. was it. thank you right burn yeah insane yeah well, i want that dc <laughs> that well that kind of stuff was really the from from like when i was growing up like i wasn't big into comics but like that was the stuff in the dc universe that i ended up hearing about like from other kids like the nerdy kids would uh, once once or twice a year they'd show up and be like yo did you know superman killed everyone and you're like what how yeah. how can superman <laughs> kill people and he's like real easy it's nuts you want to see him kill everyone and you're like and you, it really brings like it brings a lot of gravity to the normal universe because once you're aware of how incredibly destructive somebody like Superman is, his consistent choice to not f fucking burn it down is it, it's admirable. It like adds weight. So I, I'd never even considered that, but that'd be really fucking cool. Yeah. I mean, you got to think of it like this, like the, I think MCU is starting to take it from DC and, or, you know, the, the DC puts out hints, right? It's like, Who's the real villain here? Because mm. you know, DC does villains like nobody else, right? I'll give them that. Their villains yeah. are absolutely wonderful. But you have to ask your question, like, are they wrong? They might go about it the wrong way, but are they really wrong? And I think MCU is starting to pick that up off of I DC see. comics and add it in. Winter Soldier uh, or Falcon that, yeah. Winter Soldier, right? Yeah, it's like, is she so really good. wrong? She's not wrong, you know? That whole conversation Carly's with her wrong. and Anthony Mackie in, mm -hmm. in, in, was it the, 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 the episode before the season finale that was an amazing amazing discussion it really makes you think about it but that mm -hmm. is actually a good point i mean the one thing between marvel and dc that i've i've and we've i've said this to you before like one thing that i'm not a fan of what marvel does is one shot these massive specifically talking about the movies they yeah. one shot yeah. these massive villains ultron i mean are you kidding me yeah. you're 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 killing them off in three out two and a half two hours I mean, come on now. I mean, even well, technically um, he's not dead, but well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Valid point. Would love to see what happens. I mean, yeah. spoiler alert, Vision is technically back. So, I yeah. mean, what are we yeah. doing with there? There. Um, I don't like how they do that. And I like mm -hmm. what, what DC does with the exception of Zod, even though they did bring him back in Doomsday, being able to, to take these villains and put them somewhere. They're starting to learn, like you said, with the Raft now in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. What's going mm -hmm. on with that and the uh, potential, which they already announced, the Thunderbolt series. Um, mm -hmm. Because what are you going to do? Like, like Dr. Doom is going to be here before we know it. Is he really going to be wrong, Final dude. Fantasy once and then uh, Final Fantasy Fantastic Four and <laughs> one once? Like, they better don't not. do that. I think they Galactus, lose so much. Please don't do that. Yeah, they better not do that. They'll lose so much if they did that to Doom. Doom, this is all building up to Doom. Like this is this is 100. You can see it, you can smell it. Uh, and then Doom <laughs> answers to a higher up, so we're gonna see that as well. But it's like, oh, yeah. I think the series that we have now is doing so much justice for the MCU. Like, we I like the MCU, but now I love the MCU. You know, it's yeah. just like they're painting this picture across many days and many hours, and now my wife is watching with me right like people are starting to come in that just didn't yep. care for the movies are starting to watch i don't know and i yeah. and they're they're putting and they're putting the budget behind the flare right like yeah the movie hands down <laughs> the last episode of falcon and winter soldier oh. had the sickest five minutes of action sequence i have seen yes. in a marvel movie in my so fucking yes. so life good. i was like chill bumps right now bro yes, talking thinking about, about it, it. yes so good. right Oof, like so it good. was my like mm. my wife and i like like that whole that whole show was amazing because you get to know like that's just like with wandavision you get to know them as like intimately as mm -hmm. characters as humans mm -hmm. and the conflict yes. that exists as they're making, you know, the decisions associated with being a hero, and they did that mm -hmm. so well. Yes. Um, uh, in that, but then, like, so you have these really important conversations. You have these really important moments where you need, like, these are the conversations that need to happen. And but you're backing these sort of like character-driven important moments with the same kind of budget that is like jaw-dropping. So at the end of the fucking like episode six, you're like screaming to the TV, like fucking get him!" Like just you're so yes. amped. And I, Dude. I was unaware that Marvel could crank their storytelling Man. up like that. Bro, oh, it blew my mind. Did the action scene. Okay. Action sequences was great in the movies, but 
this is some next level shit. My wife was like, she okay, she was leaning back, and when uh, you know, if you guys haven't seen, you'll see. It's not really a spoiler. When he got hit out of the sky and went in the water, oh, she's like, man. shut up, <laughs> shut up. She was like so standing good. up. You can see the blue light. I was like, what the fuck? oh, it was man. so good. But the, 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 you brought up such a great strong point because. Dude, I was explaining this to Matt. I was like, the problem with the DCU is that cr- it's like you're super hungry, right? And you got your favorite bag of chips and you're just dragging it in your mouth. You're not getting the flavor, you know? You're just, just eating it just to eat it and fulfill your, oh your Satan God. yourself, right? But with MCU doing right now with TV series, they're letting us live in the lives of these characters because yeah. Wanda was Wanda. Remember, I was like, oh, she's cool. She has cat body. Wow, no, she's powerful as hell. You need to know. This is not the comic Wanda. And then when you get to see it, like Anthony Mackie, we were talking about it before. That speech he gave at the end, bro, uh, that came from a that's a real life situation that he's bringing out of him. Mm-hmm. And 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 it doesn't feel scripted at all. It's just completely all his emotions in it. And it's like now, I, now I'm like, damn, I needed to respect Anthony Mackie more. <laughs> like, you yes, know, we have not even the character, <laughs> him as an actor. You know <laughs> like, that 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 moment was incredible. Like Amy and I were going back and forth about like how we felt about his acting, kind of throughout the whole thing. And then after that, I was like. Nope. So, yep. Uh, it's great. Uh, it's great. <laughs> yeah. He's phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, man. and his. Oh, my God. <laughs> I could. Yeah. His suit. Like. <laughs> suit. Oh, God. So it's good. It's a comic book, but it's so iconic at so the same good. time. Oh, my God. They yeah. They literally hit the nail on the head. It is perfect. It's so not good. corny. It's not campy, but it's comic book and it's iconic. When he busts. Oh, my God. When he busted through that window after he threw the the shield, the shield oh yeah. my god dude when the wings folded in, i was oh, like ah! so good. i was screaming dude i was like i knew it was gonna happen but it looked so yep. good you know was, oh. you knew it was coming and you, yeah. you just you weren't you couldn't anticipate how awesome it was and the oh. the thing i loved about that moment was like you got to see him get his ass kicked a few times yeah, yeah. and you were like so <laughs> So I just remember oh, going to the yells, episode. He yells in that speech. Mm-hmm. I don't have super serum. I'm yes. not a star. Oh my God. Yes. yes. Sorry. I had to say that. I had yeah. to say that. that no, was... no, no, it's fine. It's it, like, that's, that's super important because that's because the he thing. Everyone, <laughs> right. Everyone thinks superheroes have to have superpowers. But the thing is, he said, I'm taking real life world in the palm of my hands as I go along with it. If I die trying, at least I went down fighting. Yes. Damn, dude. Oh, and the ending. I, I was crying. I, I was like a grown ass oh, man. That. cry, dude. <laughs> Uh, oh, the very cry. end, I, like, yeah. well, yeah, you like, you have a moment, you're like, wow, that was emotional, and then he's like, come with me, and they go, and you're, you know, it's coming, you know it's but coming. you're not fucking ready, like, because that oh. emotion that he put in that, that was oh, real, man. Mm-hmm. that wasn't acting, yeah. that was the shaking, the the man, it's like all the history that, uh, you know, African Americans go through, or anybody of color goes through. In that situation of, of of being a hero but not being recognized as one or anything of that nature, I felt that it like pulled it out of me, you know. And it's like, and even if you're not a person of color, you felt it because you you could see it. And it's like, dude, this is beyond acting at this point. This is real life shit that we're seeing, and it's so good. And oh, I just love this so much, man. I wanted to hug my TV at that point. I was just like, I'm here, let me get in with you, man. Like, ah, oh, it's so good. And I and I want that for DC. Like everyone says, oh, Frank, you just hate on DC. Yes, I hate on them because I want them to be better. I you mean, know, it's, it's corny, but it does hold true. Competition breeds mm. excellence. If you look at yeah. what what DC was doing on TV with the Arrowverse, uh, Flash, the first couple of seasons we've had mm. this conversation. The first couple of seasons <laughs> were okay, and then it just jumped the shark at some point. Like, what the hell is happening here? It's campy. Yeah. It's stupid. Graphics are horrible, whatever. But I will say, if you haven't had a chance yet, um, I think because of the success of um, of what uh, Disney Plus is doing with all their mm. shows, talking about The Mandalorian to now, obviously, WandaVision and Falcon and Winter, Captain America and Winter Soldier and, and, and presumably beyond, take a look when you get a chance. Watch the first couple of episodes of Superman and Lois. The budget is increased. They film it like it's a movie. The storytelling, the acting is considerably better obviously i have a sweet spot for superman he's my cuckoo so it's a little bit uh it's a little bit different for me but i i think if you watch that for like a first couple of episodes you'll see that they're 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 learning i think from 
what they're doing on Disney Plus. Still have no idea what they're doing with the movies. We'll see what happens with James Gunn, but I think they may be getting it. Uh, I don't know, man. You seen Suicide <laughs> Squad? So I, I'm. I'm talking about the new trailer, bro. Because it's James Gunn, I have a little bit of faith. I have a little bit of faith. Okay, here's the but deal. Here, okay. If they own it, okay. If they yeah. own that kooky, like, like Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. If they, yeah, like Guardians of the Galaxy. If they own it, then okay, I'm here for it because mm. Harley is not. She don't have all her marbles. She knows. She says it all the time. If they live in the world of those characters, like they don't have all their marbles, they just there to have a good time while it's like effing stuff up and trying not to die. Cool. All right, I'm there for it. But stop changing the character so dang often when I can't get attached to him, dude. Yeah. Like the casting, it needs work. Recasting, <laughs> recasting, recasting. It's got to stop. Yeah. Well, that yeah. for me, what was really frustrating, uh, because I watched a lot of DC like cartoons growing up, mm -hmm. so like that was my like emotional attachment. I was like, oh, Batman the Animated. I don't series. like Marvel. I don't like like oh like a like a like, a, like Justice League like late like late nineteen nineties like early two thousand yeah. Justice yeah, League, yeah, dude. And like when they announced Justice League, I was so amped, and they started doing everything, and I was like, "Where's Martian Manhunter? It's bullshit." Yeah, I was like, "This is trash!" Like I couldn't, I Dude, couldn't believe it. At it. Unite the seven, unite the seven. You're you're counting. Okay, Aquaman. Mm -hmm. Okay, Superman. Okay, mm -hmm. Batman. Okay, who else is it gonna be? Is it gonna be Green Lantern? Is it gonna be Martian Manhunter? Mm -hmm. Like who is it? The one thing I will say is, if you if you read uh, about everything afterwards, right? Their idea for the trilogy, which that is actually one thing I will not get beyond. I absolutely hate Snyder's version for his trilogy. I want to burn that with all the fire in the world. I oh. never want that to see the light of day. I absolutely hate the ideas that they set forth in there with Lois, with Bruce, with Superman. No, no. <laughs> but what I did, oh, where was I going with this? <laughs> Sorry. Something know. about. Uh Oh man, uh, Maybe... where I, I don't know where yeah. I was going with it, but yeah, but but yeah. Anyway, just take. Maybe that I can thing. finish your thought. Let me see. They need to take the time to redo everything. In the fact of we need single show slash movies for each character. Yes. Be introduced for us to fall in love with, then pull them together. Not just we need to do an Avengers. They saw how much money that made. You know, like that's <sighs> how I feel it is. You know, it's just like. You know, do do a serious Batman, like a, a rated R Batman. Do a rated R uh, uh, Superman, and and so on and so oh forth. Oh my God! Do Introduce we'll Martian Manhunter, and like, don't even like market it heavily. Just put it out there. Oh, that's what I was saying. And just let us. Oh, did I do it? Nice. No, no, yeah. Uni unite the seven. Unite the seven. Yeah. It was about the seven kingdoms to go against Dark Side, not mm. the seven Justice League members. It's like, come on, man. That's yeah, that was. Sorry. Yeah, I. I'm That's like, this was. is dark side, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> like, yeah. This is now it goes. I got his ass whipped too. I was like, yeah, and everyone says dark side, bro. Everyone says a, a lot of people say if you put Thanos against dark side, dark side oh, yeah. will whoop Thanos' ass. I mean, yeah, you even you. Yeah, yeah, dark side is pure, pure, pure evil, man. <laughs> like the the comic where he just grabs a man by the throat and slammed him down and says, "Are you done?" Like, <laughs> that was bad. what? He just shut him up. He's like, I'm not trying to fight you. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to dominate this world. You either die here or leave. Like, yeah. All right. You know, and that's a villain for you, man. Like Joker, one of the most iconic villains ever. Why isn't there a real Joker movie? I'm not talking about that. Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. Weird movie that we saw. <laughs> did you did you like did you and actually uh, Ben as well? Did you like the Snyder cut version of him, even though it was a couple of lines? Did you like the way they were going with that job? Oh, that yeah. Was completely mm -hmm. different than what well, that we saw felt, in the, um, the horrible Suicide Squad. So, movie. like, you know, as a good depiction of Joker, in my mind, like, it evolves with time, right? So, like, the people who do the best portrayals are the people who are like, this was Joker for the 2000s. This was Joker for, you know, like, you know. And when I saw that scene, I was like, that's the right Joker. Like yeah. not like it same makeup, whatever for Suicide Squad, but like that 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 really unsettling, exhausted laugh that's just so racked with pain and confusion. But like it's almost like he's ready to give the joke up, but he fucking can't because it's his whole life, right? And they get so close to like really I mean, they both cross the line with each other. Oh um, yeah. which all like and and you see Joker like I don't know the right word to say it like dismantled like open for a second trying to understand like because it didn't go the way he expected it to and then he's like quietly starts laughing again at, at him and like 
that felt haunting like every other really yeah. good depiction of Joker. So like I was a huge fan of that part. Mm -hmm. I want to watch yeah, that I, movie. I agree. I agree. It's like, you know, there's spoiler alert. I mean, if you didn't read the comic, it's on you. Uh there's <laughs> there's four jokers. Um and yeah, and, oh, yeah. and I and this I think yeah, and now like over through time, DC's kind of introduced us for clear jokers. Um, you know, you had your Jack Nicholson who was kind of like, I'm tired of people's bullshit, but I'm a little adult. I'm I'm a strategist. And then you have your oh, um give me a gun. Yeah, yeah. And then you had your um what's his face? Good Lord, Heath Ledger. Yep. Which is like he's 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 on the, the verge of snapping, but he's still thinking and he's diabolical, but he's letting Batman know we can't survive without each other. We 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 are the same. And you know, and then you have the the, the suicide squad one. Um, you know, and and and, and it's, there's a place for everything, but I think they need to have that one Joker kind of like be the be the joke, so to speak, and um, really bring out the dark side of Batman, uh, or even let Batman crack and 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 kill Joker for once because he'd done it multiple times in the in the comic, yeah. and, and and the biggest joke was, I'm not gonna spoil it, but I mean you can think about it. That's the biggest joke. It's just like is Batman really? The, the the vigilante fighter of justice that we think he is or is he just as bad as joker are they actually the same you know the answer is absolutely yeah. <laughs> batman is not he's cracked uh and, and and i think if we see that we get a little bit more deep representation uh and and uh, representation of mental health in movies people are so uh, iffy about touching that but when in a comic verse where people think everything is perfect, seeing DC side of things where things can get real goddamn dark, those dark thoughts that you had in your head when you close yourself up in your closet because your anxiety's popping, this shit's real, bro. Like, I think that's something that, that Marvel will never touch um, that, that they need to put. I mean, they kind of try to do it with Wanda, right? Like she was like on the verge of snapping because mm -hmm. everything was taken away from her so fast, but they just kind of, she's just like, oh, my world, you know? I. I yeah. Well, doesn't anyway. Moon Knight check a lot of those boxes in two years? We don't it comes know. Out presumably. Well, yeah, we don't know where they're going. <laughs> nah. The Carol, ca the Carol, the character in the comic books. I mean, yeah, the comic books. Yeah, he's, whoo, 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 yeah, he's out there. Shit. Uh, he is out <laughs> there. And if they hit that right, I feel for Batman. I feel for DC at that point because they had so long to do it. You know, mm. uh, I don't know. I, I want they DC were to be doing it right for so many years, and then as soon as what was it the dark knight rises came out it was just downhill since i like then, i like dark knight i well, like I'm the sorry, theories after that, after oh yeah that, yeah like, yeah like after yeah, that, yeah i mean they they owned it between the christopher reeves superman yeah. i mean three and four nuclear man that was mm. horrific um michael keaton you know nipplegate in batman and robin <laughs> oh my like, god or, yeah like that was like obviously there's timing you get through one or two and then it's just Haha, what are you guys doing uh but you know they they owned it for quite a while until robert downey jr and yeah. john favreau and kevin fye he went bro Let's it's the this. time loop bro you can't you can yeah. only tell the same story so often with different yeah. people it's like spider-man like kevin knew he was like we, we're not telling another origin story how many yeah. times have you heard this like and i thought homecoming was brilliant agree you know mm -hmm. i was like perfect tom holland was great he you could tell he loves spider-man he embodies it they take the ultimate universe in the amazing and spectacular and smash it together and say no more origin story let's get down to the nitty-gritty let's get to some real facts bring michael keaton back in the guy that's been in comics for a long time movie wise he was so good as vulture <clears throat> in that character yes, he was sir. so good he's such a good bad guy that <laughs> the speech in the car Oh, oh my God, dude. Awesome. i was sweating for know, him when they know he was like oh. he did the michael keaton huh yep yeah i was like oh uh, <laughs> i remember yeah i remember first time i watched that i was like no 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 i was like no he can't it's he can't do i was like i was like asking amy like do you think he knows do you think she's like yes <laughs> he knows. And i love zendaya in it she's so clueless she's, she's just oh. like let's go <laughs> god i love it oh such great casting uh but honestly, if DC slips, they should just do animated. I'm here for the animated. And I'll go to the theater to watch an animated Young Justice, like full fledged three hour movie. I would 100 percent go. Oh, and watch absolutely. It. Absolutely. I mean, they still they're still doing the one thing that I don't like they're doing. I mean, I want uh, Robert Twinkly Face Patterson's Batman to be part of this universe. And maybe it will happen with the Flash. Maybe hey, which that universe with with 
they, with they're, Ben Affleck they're, they're universe? Doing, they're doing so many one shots in the movies. Yeah. It's frustrating. And I think that's what's dividing so many people too. Yeah, like, you don't know who to root for, right? <laughs> yeah, well, not who to root for, but like- You I don't guess know what you're getting. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like we're so um, um, ingrained in the way Marvel is doing it. And hell, even Star Wars now, with how they're using the Mandalorian to branch off and do so many different things. Yeah, they're doing a little things different with Bad Batch and, and timelines and everything. They're using things to bring things together. DC's like, okay, that stuck today. Let's do that. We're gonna go five years. This is a whole different universe. Yeah. All right, you're gonna be a whole different Batman. Flash, oh, okay, we're gonna do this. Like, you know they what? Gotta, they gotta bring it together. And I don't know if they ever will, and it's sad. What I was, so what I'm thinking, right now is like it, what marvel's been doing with that the mcu right has been building this mythology of <clears throat> movies that you can watch and they're all interconnected and if you want to know something about s some shit that you didn't catch or you like watch like let's say you joined in for infinity war and you were like i'm sorry <laughs> What now? I don't understand any of this shit. You can go back mm -hmm. and learn everything just by watching the other movies. And I think that yep. the thing that DC needs to do is their universe is beautifully interconnected and they're not interconnecting it. And yeah. so until they start doing that, I think that the storytelling will keep falling behind. And they tried to bring it together on TV. I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but on The Flash with Infinite Crisis, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they wiped out the multiverse. Like they actually use the TV to, to, uh, erase. uh, to erase. Yes. Thank you. To erase everything else that is happening, not only on TV, but in comics. And of course, at the time it was, uh, what is it? The, um, DC, whatever Teen Titans was on that app. Oh. Like they just deleted oh, yeah. it all. And they said, okay, you know what? This is the one earth. And then that's it. It's like, you, you can't. Uh, just stop it. You just can't. You know, I, I see even probably like, wait, what? Like, come on for, for someone who's just trying to come in and figure it out. Like you just said, what about, how are you supposed to know these things? Yeah. I always want like, to show it, people it, that it, don't it, like comics about it. Yeah. Right. It's like, how many Batmans are there? Jeez. You know, it's just yeah. like, all right, look, I hope Robert Pattinson killed. He looks great in a Batman suit. I'm going to lie. The he has the face. looks dope. Yeah, he's chiseled in the face. You know, he looks, he looks, he fits a Batman because Ben Affleck looked a little, I'm sorry, Ben, but you look a little teddy bear, I guess is a good way to say it. Um, yeah, he, he made a good, I think he did okay as a Bruce, but I like him as Bruce. You know, Batman. Um, but yeah, I hope Robinson, uh, Robert Patterson comes in and knocks it out of the park because I want him to stay Batman. Like, yeah. I developed the universe off of him, you know, and then if you want to introduce, I that thought the Barry legit. Allen that we got in the TV series was good enough to be in the movies. Yeah, Why Grant, is he not? I like him. Yeah. I like Grant, yeah. You know, his, okay, his comedy was kind of dry and corny, but, you know. Could be writing. It could be. I think it's the writing because that comedy is in the comic books. It's just that they didn't, the writers probably didn't think it was going to be funny for people of today. Yeah. So they just tried to modernize it. I'm just like, Ugh, you know, like, don't do it. <laughs> you know, so. But I think he's great. Yeah, he doesn't. He's not ripped or nothing. But who? I mean, just put him in the gym for a couple of months. He'll be good. Like, you know, <laughs> I just uh, meat and he's fine. Yeah, like I want a live action Teen Titans, but I'm afraid. You know, have you seen uh, it? Have you guys seen the uh, Teen Titans? The, it's not the really cartoon Teen Titans, but it's no the. Uh, so this is what I'm talking about. Yes. So uh, yeah. No. Yeah, don't even bring that up. <laughs> just the no. what? <laughs> So um, <laughs> there was two seasons. I believe it's on HBO Next now. Chat, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but there was two seasons on the short-lived DC Universe app. Well, there was Doom Patrol on there and two seasons of Team Titans. It was live action. Jason Todd, Robin, Dick Grayson, uh, Robin, who last season turned into Nightwing, Wonder Girl, the understudy of Wonder Woman. I forget her yeah. name. It's, I'm yeah, drawing yeah. a blank right now. Um, and a couple of other uh, uh, characters as well. And it was dark, it was gritty. Um, it was a little interesting. Uh, Too much, man. But, they... but I, see, I, I enjoyed it because I took it as what it was. I actually really liked the second season because of Deathstroke and his son, and they mm. went a little crazy with that. Did they bring back the Deathstroke from Arrow? No, it was actually a different oh. Deathstroke, and the actor I can't think of his name. I right actually like really that guy in Arrow. <laughs> oh, Ma, uh, Manu Bene. I, I don't yeah, know how to pronounce. I his actually name. liked him. Bardicus. He's an awesome actor. Yeah, awesome, yeah. awesome actor. I, 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 I'll admit, I like yeah, Arrow. Voice, hello. 
yeah i liked arrow season one through three maybe? i think three is when it started unraveling for me because i was real and then when they started crossing over with like uh the flash i was like okay all right all right we got a building we're building stones here this is good and then it just became bad bad a bad batman and i was just like <laughs> oh okay see chat this is what you're gonna get out of the comics every saturday at 12 p.m eastern standard time here on rare drop yeah, yeah. we're just gonna go off on tangents and talk about everything yeah what time is it marvel oh, wow DC. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I didn't even realize the time yeah no uh, no no yeah that's i mean yeah well we got we got started a little bit late due to technical the technical difficulties by the, by the way it's not our show it's been show we just not not not, not 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 yeah. no i've been <laughs> look like i want everybody to know that y'all are legit um yeah the only other thing i really wanted to ask y'all about tonight was like what what so what are you what are you reading or what are you watching currently um and like yeah, a little bit of, you go frank you go frank dude i'm miles morales i am the embodiment bro I, anything that he brings anything that's got his name in it i read it and i watch it and i look at it i study it um because i mean that that's important to me because the representation of my favorite hero I never thought there'd be the day that there would be a brown skin under that mask, honestly. And I love the message that they pull with it. I mean, even from the Spider-Verse, uh, that message was really, really important. Um, and it was the first time that Marvel animation got it 100% right with Spider-Verse. Uh, and and, and I did not expect it to come from that one, you know? And Spider-Verse 2 is going to be even more right because the writers and everybody behind it is represented by what they're trying to put the message out to be. It's not just somebody behind closed doors. And um, so I'm all about that. I'm rereading everything. Um, Saladin is doing the story behind it. Um, granted, he's not the representation that people would want, but at least he does some justice. At least I feel. I know I'm gonna. I know Kate is probably watching this. Is probably cussing me out for saying that. Uh, but um, <clears throat> I feel like at least we got something. You know, we could do better. Uh, the video game was awesome. Um, so that's where I'm at right now. I'm getting ready to deep dive into some. Um, just picking up like the old the, the 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 like the iron heart and loki and stuff like that and just trying to get ready for these shows coming up um just kind of want to revisit and just kind of com compare and contrast and uh certain things that i liked about it, certain things i didn't like about it. like civil war 3 in the comments was horrible god if they bring that in in the, the mcu i'm gonna be mad uh so I'm, I'm doing that and now i'm trying to open up my my dc side again and uh look at those really really dark comics because uh, mcu is getting there man venom if you guys have not seen the new Venom, that is dark. If it had a rating, it will be NA. They are going super dark with Venom. Uh, I heard the the recent stuff. Everyone's like looking at like the writers, like, okay, you had me in the first half. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think I think you guys should take, yeah, pick up some. If you want some darkness, pick up some Venom. But that's that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Uh, MCU all day uh, because it's it's relatable. I try to watch as much MCU and break break down the episodes and and like see all the little the man they put so many easter eggs so yeah. many easter eggs. yeah uh so you know that's where i'm at right now what about you man um actually that's where i'm gonna really uh poke rank on a little bit on this i i've been out of the comic books a little bit now uh just because unfortunately life uh but i mean i as far as watching i literally watch everything from from my DVR is on explode every single night. So uh, whether it's the flash, whether it's arrow, whether it's now uh, invincible, which just got signed for yes. another, not one, but yes. two seasons mm. on Amazon. God, we didn't even talk about that. that. We'll talk about it more. Yeah, yeah. I need to start watching that. Yeah, I you haven't uh, seen first, it. I haven't watched yet. Ten Wait a minute, man. Like, watch Pause it tonight. Like watch episode. it right now. Like go downstairs. Did and be you like, not watch Amy? episode one? Grab Amy and watch that first I did, episode. episode one. Please. I've been busy as shit. Please. I've been wanting to. I bet. Yeah, episode but, one tonight dude okay please and hit okay. us up in the inbox yep it, <laughs> it's it even like frank two weeks ago told me that and i'm like all right and i just my jaw is on it's so it's, it's good so good okay so i mean i watch everything but like i i mean i grew up on the comic books i remember running to my local comic book shop like at 8 30 because i completely forgot for some reason i was hanging out with my friends and all of a sudden they said something i went <gasps> superman and I ran to buy the Death of Superman comic book. I jetted from my friend's oh, house. Oh man. Because I needed to get like that. That's when they brought death into comics. Yeah. And they then killed death shortly after. But yeah, like, I remember like, that's how ingrained I was. I have lost that a little bit. I think the last, one of the last series that I remember reading just because it was so vivid to me because obviously video games too was uh, the Injustice comic series. 
which was yeah. awesome injustice is but, so good dude i mean that, those first couple of panels with superman's hand going through joker's chest was what yeah. but yeah. um i am actually going to be poking frank and and maybe that will be part of the comic series you know some reads what should we be reading some, mm -hmm. some story longs and things of that nature because i do want to get back into it because that's what what i grew up on and that is actually one of the things outside of everything else excited for it to get back into it because i have been away from it for a little bit well, I, th I mean like there's so much content to consume that's coming out of oh, so God, many different yeah. nozzles now so like it's almost like you need a yeah. tv specialist <laughs> to like consume all you content do. you could literally do a show really on, on comics like like the physical books yeah oh my gosh Oof. Well, I hope uh, for everyone listening, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Before we sign out, I'm going to let our special guests pitch you more than just <laughs> the, co the comic, <laughs> the comics podcast. Uh, Frank, Matt, if you have any other projects that you would like to promote, let everybody know what you got going on. And then I'll take us on out. Sure. Um, my name is Technique. Uh, Twitch.tv says Technique. No, you know E at the end. Just a Q. Uh, Technique TV. No, you know E at the end. Just a Q. And then add a TV for Twitter. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming up that I can't really talk about. But keep your eyes on my Twitter because it's it's about to get real. I'm putting in my two weeks tomorrow. I told the boys that I'm going to do a ballerina spin and slap it down on the desk. Because um, <laughs> that, that's happening. We're finally, after eight years of having a full-time job and streaming, we're finally going to take that next step. Um, because I'm a preparer. I don't just do things off the cuff. I, you know, this is be my biggest risk that I've taken in my life. So we're doing it and, um, working on hosting. I host a lot of stuff. Um, and this show is a, is a, is a, is a, is, it's my baby. Um, we're going to treat it right and we're going to do it right. And, um, like I said, thanks again, Ben and Kevin, and then just for believing in me and Matt to be able to bring this to you guys, because this is more of a passion than, than proving somebody right or wrong or anything. And we're, we're, I really want to iterate that we're bringing in everybody here. It's not for oh, veterans yeah. only. It's not for gatekeepers only. This is literally for everyone. And matter of fact, I think it's more for people that haven't even touched comics before and just want to know about them. Uh, yeah. Open your hearts to the world because this was my escape, man. I, I didn't have an easy childhood, you know? My mom's Japanese, my dad is black, and and we we, <laughs> it was a strict household, man. I you know I could only play my systems an hour every day if I got lucky, um you know, and I had no brothers or sisters. I had chores, but you know it taught me how to grow up and be a, a very prepared young man. And comics were my escape. I lived in those worlds. I wore the mask, uh, both DC and MCU, or excuse me, both DC and uh, Marvel. And I really want to be able to bring that to you and your kids show us for everybody and i uh, hope to see you there yeah absolutely i mean we we talked about it before as far as the show goes you know i'm very excited to be working with frank on this i've 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 wanted to do something like this for a very long time and uh, being able to reach out to kevin and chat with him and say hey actually we got this going on side note um i've known kevin for a long time if you ever want some good old best buy stories i worked with him for a while <laughs> i'll be more than happy everybody to, went uh, through best buy Did I you know, go to best buy bro Darkness, oh like my God. so i got stories on kevin no but um <laughs> oh he has more stories on me uh <laughs> but but as far as the show goes i like i said i'm extremely excited for this i can't wait to to show you what we have we've already been planning out a couple of shows and for for like like frank said whether you're brand new into it i think we have uh, a lot of things to say and a lot of conversation to be had around literally everything. And, um, you know, it's just not comics and it's just not Marvel. It's DC. It's going to be Thundercats. It's going to be um, Ghostbusters. Star it's gonna Wars. Be Star Wars. You're going to have that in there, obviously, because the High Republic series that is out there and much, much more. As far as personal goes, um, I am very excited to, to begin uh, fundraising here in the next couple of weeks, not only for Play Live, but of course, GCX. I got some amazing things planned. Um, last year, my community came together outstandingly, and we raised thirty-two thousand dollars to play live in in wow. in a short time. And then for and then for a month later, for a four-hour block, we raised almost twenty thousand dollars. So I'm I'm very very wow. excited to to you work with really some of it. my mm -hmm. team is amazing. <laughs> I can say that my community is really really amazing. And um, you know, just just outside of that, just play some cool video games. I'm honestly kind of uh. Even though there's nothing out there right now really new, I know you played Returnal today. Oh. But for those of us that don't have oh. a PlayStation Five, um, you know, so I'm kind of I'm kind of excited to get back to my roots and playing some some other uh, things that I haven't played in a while. So, yeah, I'm oh yeah, I'm Nighthawk Play, spelled with a Z. <laughs> Twitch, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, go. TikTok. I'm very active out there, and uh, uh, I, I got some cool things uh, that I'm working on that you can find on my Twitter. 
Amazing. Thank you. Promoter, smile. <laughs> And I am Ben, Professor Broman. Thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, if this inspired you or got you excited to finally have another, uh, finally have the place, the best place on the internet to talk about comics or listen to, get started, bring your family, bring your friends, bring your kids, tune in this Saturday. It's going to be freaking amazing. And every Saturday after that, forever. Um, but, but honestly, if this podcast made you think of anybody, uh, comic fan in your life, please share it with them. Uh, and uh, as always, thank you for being here. You can you can subscribe and all that stuff if you'd like to as well on the feed. But until next time, goodbye. Uh. Bye, everybody.